major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able to Air, the one and only program that in Vermont and beyond focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene Seiler. And on this television program, we focus on Wheelpad, an organization that focuses on helping people live um, better lives through inclusion and temporary housing, uh, etc. Um, before we introduce our guest, let's, um, uh, you know, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and Ala Israel. Uh, we would like to welcome our guest, Julie Linebacker, President and CEO of Wheelpad, Inc. Uh, Julie, uh, thank you for joining us on Able and Our Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Um, can you tell us the missions and goals of Wheelpad and what exactly that is? Sure. Um, well, Wheelpad is a 200 square foot accessible bedroom and bathroom that can attach to an existing home. And um, we developed this to hang on one second. Uh, we, de we developed this as a means of inclusion for um, people who have different mobility issues. And we um, basically, our goal is to provide inclusion and accessible housing for people um, with, with mobility issues. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you go uh, um, down the list? In terms of mobility issues, what exactly sure. would that mean well, um, well, in, in this case? Yeah, our mission is to respectfully and supportively provide both transitional and permanent housing for people needing accessible living accommodations in an economical, socially conscious, and environmentally friendly way. So um, we have put up um, wheel pads for people. Uh, we have a veteran in Jericho who has ALS. Mm -hmm. We have a young girl who is becoming a young woman in, in Massachusetts who has cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And her parents used to carry her up and down stairs. And now, you know, as she's aging, that they want her to be able to have a little bit more independence. So they add a, a wheel pad onto their house. We have one in, another one in Massachusetts that's going to a senior who does not at the moment have mobility issues, but knows she will, and her family wants her to live close to her. So we have another um, person who was unfortunately shot uh, in a random accident, wow. and rather in that his family's house was not accessible. So we brought in a wheel pad so he can stay with his family, continue attending school, and continue to be with his family. So there are a multitude of reasons that people choose to have a wheel pad. It's not really for, they say, oh, but I'm not in a wheelchair. I don't need the, the hoist because we do have a hoist track for people who, who need that. Mm -hmm. But um, it is for anyone who needs to have somewhat of an accessible place to live and wants to still be with their family whose house might not be accessible. So this, so wheel pads in a sense, the uh, short definition of it, is a, an extension of a house because exactly. the house is not accessible? Yes, especially in Vermont we see so many houses that um, especially bathrooms, because many of the housing stock, <laughs> maybe the houses in Vermont were actually built before bathrooms. Yeah, and, more like uh, outhouses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with our wheel pad, we pull it up through a sliding glass door. We build a ramp, and then through uh, the other door on the other side, we make a connection, a connection to the house through a back door, through a window, uh, through whatever means. 
so that the, the person has an accessible entry, usually from a driveway, and then has their own accessible bedroom and bathroom, but can still roll into the main house for dinner to help a sister with her homework, whatever it is. So it can still be included in family. Mm -hmm. So how how big, uh, uh, in a sense, you said square feet. Um, 200 square feet. 200 square feet. So the, okay, so the bathroom is accessible. There's a track for a Hoya lifter, you said? Yes. There is a track for a Hoyer lift. Mm -hmm. It's just standard. Mm. Now, what if, let's say, uh, you know, walk me through this. Let's say, for example, um, I know sometimes obesity is not really considered a, dis a challenge. Uh, you, you know, under under Social Security Administration, as far as disability mm -hmm. is concerned. But what if a person is, let's say, overweight? Mm -hmm, uh, no issue. How how can the wheel pad help that person? Um, um, you Same know. way. It's it's built on a trailer chassis, which you can keep it on the chassis, or you can put it on a, a permanent foundation. Yeah. When we take wheel pad on tours, we have had um, extremely overweight people tour it with their heavy electric wheelchair, and it is built for that. Mm -hmm. So we have had no issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that works out just fine. Okay, go ahead. Um, <coughs> how, how long has Wilpad been around? We have been manufacturing for two years. Wow. It started as an idea with um, our godson became quadriplegic in an accident shortly before his 26th birthday. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when he came out of rehab, Nike had offered him a job before his accident, and Nike honored the job, so he moved to Portland, Oregon. In Portland, Oregon, a place that's known to be, you know, very socially conscious, yeah. he could not find an accessible place to live wow. and was forced to live in a hotel room, an accessible hotel room, for eight months before he could find his home. Oh, he bought a home. My first business is Line Sync Architecture. Mm -hmm. So he called us, his godparents, hey, can you make this, this ranch house I bought, you know, universally accessible for my wheelchair? So we did. And as we were working with Riley, my mm -hmm. husband, who's our principal architect and has a trillion ideas a year, said, Riley, what if there had been this portable, accessible bedroom and bathroom that we could have attached to your mom's house or your dad's house so that while you were figuring out your long-term solution, you would have not been isolated in a hotel room. And here he would be picked up by the Nike van, go to work, come back home, and all his friends and family were like, Riley, come on, I'll take you out, come over to my house, I'll cook. But there was no room for people to come to his hotel room. Mm. And quite frankly, he didn't have the bandwidth. So he ended up being very socially isolated for those eight months, which wow. is not good for anyone's head. No, it's not, no. <laughs> so um, Riley is minority owner in the company. Mm -hmm. He helped us with promotion. And it, that's how the idea was born. And we went to a couple, I went to a couple building um, uh, business plan competition, starting with the strolling of the heifers down in Brattleboro, Vermont. And the first one, you know, I won this competition. I thought, wow, we're not the only ones who think this is a good idea. And as I told you, I'm so sad not to be in your studio right now. Uh, I am in Washington, D.C., meeting with people from the Veterans Administration mm -hmm because there are a number of veterans who are languishing in Walter Reed Hospital and various other hospitals solely because their house is not accessible. Um, we know mm -hmm. that when a wounded vet especially is home with their family, home where they can be participating in society, not in a hospital somewhere, uh, yeah. that that's going to help their healing of the whole person not just the physical. So I'm down here meeting with people to see what we can do to get it through um, the bureaucratic process of the VA so we can actually help veterans 
Um, uh, to, to backtrack for a minute, I mean, um, now as far as the Americans with Disabilities Act and accessible housing, because I know mm -hmm. I know the Americans with Disabilities Act is there's a big thing with employment there, but as far as accessible housing, how can because uh, we know the Americans with Disabilities the Americans with Disabilities Act there's a lot of bureaucratic stuff that needs to be changed as far as like housing and um, you know what's one thing that um, that you can work on to or that you're telling people to work on when it comes to accessible housing? Well, with our architectural practice and our focus with WILPAD on ADA um, accommodations, what we do now in all buildings, it is so easy to make everything in what they call universal design, which either meets or exceeds the ADA requirement, the American with Disabilities Act. And it, all it takes is a little bit of thought for inclusion. So we are very proponent, very much proponents of making every building we have include universal design. In our office, our, our studio in Wilmington, Vermont, we actually keep a wheelchair in there. Right now, all of our employees are, do not need to use a wheelchair, but whenever we're thinking about things, we keep that wheelchair in there to remind us, okay, is there an accessible a bathroom on every floor of this building we're designing? Is the entry uh, barrier free? What about the showers? Because especially right now, with the advances in medical technology, more and more people are living through debilitating diseases and debilitating accidents, such as Riley, that there was an accident in the pool. You look at the extreme skiers, you look yeah, at yeah. so many people that there's no reason why all of our housing stock, especially the new stuff that's being built, should not be universally designed. Mm -hmm. Have you ever made an accessible kitchen? Yes, yes, we did for Riley, as a matter mm. of fact. Mm. And it, it, it doesn't take that much. It means putting the um, microwave at, at a certain height. It means having, uh, you know, we did, uh, uh, it means having a sink at a, at a proper height. It means having either shelves that lower or making sure that there's room for um, grippers. I don't, I don't know if that's the proper name for them, but <laughs> that mm -hmm. people use to get things off by ourselves. It means using a, uh, just a touch, a, a sink, a faucet, Mm -hmm. um, and a plug that's easy to do. There's just, all it takes is a little thought. Mm. So what do you think, uh, I'll give you a prime example. Um, some weeks ago, uh, we interviewed a, um, or we went to a, an art gallery that, that they were debuting an accessible elevator and it took them a long time to get it because of a grandfather clause in the building. Okay, so my question is, why is it that it takes organizations so long to, or why do you think, in your opinion, why it takes organizations so long to put accessible things into meaning for, you know, people with special needs? Is it because of laziness or is it because, your opinion? I think it's due to them to not having the experience of, ha of, of inclusion. Maybe they've never met someone or maybe they don't have an employee. For example, we just built a ski lodge, the new Corinthia Base Lodge at Mount Snow. Yes. And we put in an accessible elevator, we put in accessible bathrooms, and not our client. Our client was wonderful. They wanted to do accessibility, but people would, other people would ask us. They would say, it's a ski lodge. Why are you putting in an accessible elevator? Why are you just, it, have you never heard of adaptive skiing? Have you never heard of parents? Adaptive sports in Vermont, skiing? they're big on that, yeah. Exactly. So Peak Resorts there, um, who were our clients for the Corinthia Ski, they got it 100%. It was other people saying, well, why do you have to, to spend that much money? You know what? It's not about spending money. 
It's about thought, and it's about yeah. inclusion. And we are all Americans. We are all citizens, and everyone deserves to watch a ski competition. Everyone deserves, if, if they're into adaptive skiing, mm-hmm. to, to participate in that. So yeah. it's really, I think, maybe lack of communication or lack of experience with people of various abilities. Mm. Um, since you said that, now, um, okay, so you built an accessible kitchen. Are you Now, this is just a bathroom, you said, bathroom and bedroom type of right. thing. Right. Uh, are you are you going to add kitchens or kitchenettes to wheel pads? At any we point? On, on this particular model, it's called the Norwich model because it was built by the cadets up at Norwich University. Mm-hmm. Our first prototype. That is just for, for what it is to uh, to be an, uh, attached to an ex, uh, an existing home for homes that are not accessible. Yes. We just finished the design of an accessible tiny house that can be a standalone. Uh, right accessible now, what? I'm sorry. Repeat that. Various manufacturers, mm-hmm. and we hope to have that online and available within within six to nine months. Wow. Okay. How yeah, long? Uh, how have you ever made a doc? Uh, accessible uh, swimming pool? We have not made an accessible swimming pool yet. I would love to. I would love to see one because, you know, people, you know, it's hard for me to get in and out of a pool, you know. Something without ah. the stairs, something like a little, you know, a little easy to get in and out of the pool, you know. Mm-hmm. That is a superb idea. Uh, if you know anyone that wants us, send them our way. We'll design it for them. That is that would be wonderful. So you I basically know, you also besides okay, well. besides housing, you, you basically design anything that needs to be accessible, correct? Exactly. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now, um, how long does it take as far as the wheel pad design? How long does it take to design one? Is there a? Oh well, we have them designed. It's it's just the manufacturing. We build three to five at a time. And uh, if someone needs custom, well, then it takes, uh, it, it can take up to six to nine months, depending on where our manufacturer is in his, in his cycle. But right now, for example, we have, we have stock for, we have one actually available, and we're about to go into production for five more. Mm. So it depends on when, you, when someone calls us. Uh, but usually we try to keep always at least one, usually two in stock for if someone needs some something very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, do you usually meet the people who uh, who need this? Like you have meetings with the family members. How does that go? Or, or... yes, we do, and it goes wonderfully. Um, we meet with them because we walk every family through the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have two models right now. We have the Norwich, Norwich model, which I told you about, which is the, the 200 square foot model. Mm-hmm. We have one that's a little bit larger because we had one client that said, well, I'm losing my mobility, but I right. still want to sleep next to my wife. I need a larger one. It needs to be 12 foot wide so I can have a queen bed in there. The the standard um, wheel pad can only fit a double bed or a hospital bed. So we designed what we call the XL model that's 12 foot. Mm. Now, the XL cannot be on a chassis. That needs to be on a permanent foundation. Mm. But um, so, and that one gets custom when when oh. someone orders an XL, wow. then we make it, and that usually takes probably about four months. Wow, have it done yeah. for restaurants? We have done accessible restaurants. Uh, we haven't used one, for, you know, with Line Sync Architecture has designed restaurants that um, for accessibility, mm-hmm. but not That's good. you know Wheelpad is like it's it's a, a product that people can just purchase. Then Line Sync Architecture does the uh, designs for accessibility in any type of situation, whether it's an office building or a school, a restaurant. But I really like your idea. I got my head spinning now about designing an accessible pool because, yeah. um, you know, the weightlessness of, of water therapy is fantastic for very many people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, now, uh, 
Is there anything that you haven't designed yet besides the pool that you would like to um, design? And do you have any future plans of designing those items? Well, as I said, we're, we're in the middle of producing an accessible tiny home. And we really kind of go, when clients come to us with an issue, then, then we work with our clients, we collaborate with our clients. Of, you know, what do you want? If, if someone says, okay, I'm going, I want to build a, an observatory that I can show, you know, astronomy things for, to people who have mobility issues. Okay, we'll design that. You know, we would design anything. The whole thing, as, as I kind of keep mentioning, is it's about inclusion. We yeah. all deserve all equal opportunity to participate in life and, and to participate in great things. Mm. One thing that we did um, that we really liked is we developed an accessible woodland path mm. for the Manitou lands in West Brattleboro. The first Say that again? fully accessible trail that people can go on is like a hiking trail for wheelchair users. Mm. You know, that I like, because being in nature is so important for all people, not just mm. people yeah, like that, see uh, that you know. aren't in wheelchairs. I'd like to see so, more of that, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it, now, um, anything that you haven't co that we haven't covered uh, with Wheelpad that you think is important to cover? Yes. Um, I haven't talked much about, we always say it doesn't cost more to be beautiful. And unfortunately, I'm not there in person to show you some of the photos, but when we designed this, we had our godson, Riley, in mind. Mm -hmm. So he, my husband, Joseph Sincata, the architect, said, okay, but this is, you know, we have to think this is for Riley. It's got to be the coolest room in the house. So we, what we try to do, we always say that it doesn't need to cost more to be beautiful. Right, yeah, that's We didn't true. want it to look like a hospital room. We didn't want it to look normal. We wanted it to be um, non-toxic because a lot of people with spinal cord injuries, which Riley has, also have chemical sensitivity. Oh, so we worked very hard to make something that was affordable, that was beautiful, that was eco-friendly. Yes. So he came with, up with this uh, idea of using a, a, a finish of laticrete, which is a mm. thin set that usually is used to set tiles in a bathroom. Now, we don't have any tiles in wheel pad because it's mobile, mm. and it has to be under 10,000 pounds mm. to go on agency of transportation roads. So we just used the... What do you mean by under... What do you mean by 10, under 10,000 pounds? Okay, there are restrictions to pulling trailers without a permit. Mm. And, and all the roads, these are the Agency of Transportation standards. Mm. And mm. of that, there's certain height, width, length, and weight restrictions mm. for that. Uh -huh. So we built this so that if there was a veteran, say, who needed a wheel pad, mm -hmm. that his buddies could come to our factory with the trailer hitch and just pick it up and drive it home and save the delivery cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we really want wheel pad to be as easily used as possible. So in that, we didn't use tile. We used this um, finish and then a wood veneer that, you know, just to make it look good. And, mm -hmm. you know, the wood makes it smell good. And because we're in Vermont, we designed it with SIPS panels, mm -hmm. which are structurally insulated panels. The entire roof is one panel, so as you know, our snow loads in Vermont to make sure that there would be never a possibility of a leak because it's one panel. And then we did a certain type of wood nice. on the ceiling, mm -hmm. again, nice. not to raise the cost, but it doesn't have to cost more mm. to be beautiful. What is it, I mean, I know we, we don't really talk about cost, but what is it, does it what does it cost a family to have a wheel pad, is it, or, or do they get special uh, uh, funding for it? Well, you can get funding. Um, the base price for a wheel pad is sixty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We are trying very hard to lower that, um, and I think once we build more, we'll be able to. We do have um, Vermont State Employees Credit Union and also Credit One 
will give mortgages for wheel pads. If someone it's is considered a, a small, a this is considered a small house. Disability, yeah. Um, yeah. We've had two people use the specially adapted housing grant through the VA, mm -hmm. and that pays in full. Mm. Our whole goal was that a SAH grant recipient could purchase, deliver, and build the connector to the house for the SAH grant. Mm. And that's, that was our goal, to mm. make sure that any wounded service member who needed it could afford it through the SAH grant. Mm. Mm. Well, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Did On Air. Um, we definitely like to help you in your mission to promote more of Wheelpad, uh, you know, within your mission. So, uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. And uh, next time it'll be in studio. Yeah, and maybe, maybe we can uh, tour a little wheel pad. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, well, we would <laughs> like to. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your hosting, and I really appreciate your program. Thank you very much. And All right. that puts an end to this edition of Able Dinner on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And we would like to thank uh, Wheelpad for joining us today, as well as our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and Allah Israel. Uh, thank you, and see you next time. Great. Major support for Able to Learn Air, Green Mountain Support Services, to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits, and the OSAM Group, working to get better for you at any moment.